All right, thanks, guys. Um, uh, still, uh, you know, still very, very tough, um, you know, processing kind of everything that took place on Saturday. Uh, tough, tough outcome uh, for our team. And, and, and obviously, um, a lot of good things that happened throughout the day and, and uh, putting ourselves in a position to win the football game, but uh, just unable, unable to finish and, and, and get the desired outcome that we wanted. Um, I still uh, wholeheartedly believe in our ability to go out and uh, execute and win football games. I think there's a lot to build off of, um, but at the same time, still, uh, you know, a lot of things we can correct. Um, some critical, critical errors at certain times in the game um, that uh, really, you know, hurt our chances of coming away uh, with a much needed win. And, and uh, we've got to find a way to go back to work and get ready for a, a very, very difficult challenge with the Detroit Lions coming in. Uh, very excited to be back at U.S. Bank Stadium and, uh, you know, have our, uh, our fans get that place rocking. And uh, our football team has a ton still to play for. Uh, it's all about this week and this week's opportunity. And uh, we'll go about uh, attacking that one uh, when we get going here this week uh, with our guys. Wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, just on Jonathan Bullard, uh, kind of uh, talking after the game about his ankle injury. Uh, he is day to day and it should be able to get some work in um, and progress to uh, hopefully having him available uh, on Sunday. And as well, we will uh, be opening uh, Jordan Hicks's window uh, to practice uh, starting tomorrow. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted as far as his availability for Sunday. But uh, I know Jordan's very excited to get back on the field uh, with our guys and, and uh, can't be, uh, couldn't be more excited to, to have him have the opportunity to do that. He's put in a lot of hard work with Tyler and Uriah and our trainers and um, to get back to this point. And uh, I know uh, all of our guys are looking forward to that. Uh, also, just want to uh, provide an update. We will be starting Nick Mullins at quarterback uh, this week. I thought Nick did a lot of really good things in the football game on Saturday, moved the team. Um, we had our first 100-yard rusher of the season, Nick over 300 yards, um, all positive things, and, and Nick knows uh, we also need to, you know, try to limit those uh, and eliminate those, uh, you know, critical, critical errors where we turn the football over in the red zone with chances for points uh, twice there in the football game, um, and Nick will continue to work towards that, but I think with another good week of preparation and building upon the positive things he did, Last Saturday, my expectation is Nick's going to go out and play really well for us this weekend. We'll start with Ben, and then Dave, and then Andrew. Yeah, Kevin, there's obviously been a lot of talk about the push sneaks uh, since Saturday, and it looked like you guys were in 11 personnel on the, the first couple times you snuck it as well. But looking at those last two, if, if you were going to do it again, would you put a heavier personnel group out there or change the pusher, or did you feel like that didn't really matter that much in the final result of the plays? Um, I think any time a play doesn't work out, Ben, you're always going to look at, you know, what we could have done differently. Uh, there was a, a reason behind what we were, were trying to get done. Um, it had had, uh, you know, some effectiveness earlier on in the game when we were able to do that, uh, albeit off a of tempo, uh, which was the preferred method. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, you know, in, in that situation, um, the best thing is always to, you know, get big, uh, especially for the, from the standpoint of the guys potentially pushing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, we had seen on tape some things that Cincinnati would do, possibly zeroing up the nose over Garrett and some bigger groupings um, and, and thought that might limit our ability uh, to get that initial surge, uh, which is the most important thing, regardless of the push. Um, on the quarterback sneak play. We saw that kind of play out um, earlier on in the football game. We just didn't get it done in that moment. Uh, we've been pretty successful uh, with the sneak play and, and pretty successful overall in those short yardage situations this year. Um, but all that means absolutely nothing when you don't get it done in that moment. And inevitably it's on me and uh, I got to give our guys the best possible chance to, uh, you know, have success in that moment. And uh, we didn't get it done and Cincinnati capitalized on it and, uh, you know, won the football game. Kevin, what, what's Alex Madison's outlook for this week? And um, even if he is back, would you see Ty Chandler continuing to start? Yeah, Alex is going to try to work himself, you know, back uh, this week. We'll see how he does throughout the week. 
Um, there's no question that I thought Ty had a huge role and impact on the game the other day. And, and we've been, uh, you know, giving Ty more and more carries, uh, you know, throughout the, the middle part of the season, especially going back to, you know, losing Cam Akers for the duration of the year. Um, Ty is, you know, absolutely a guy that is going to continue to see a featured, featured role um, in our offense. Uh, what that looks like moving forward, you know, as far as who gets the first touch of the game and all those things. Um, we'll, we'll continue to kind of work through based upon what we're attempting to do scheme wise. But uh, there's no question that, you know, we have question, we have confidence in Alex. Uh, but uh, I think Ty's done a lot of great things and we'll continue to do so. And hopefully will be a huge reason why we're able to have, you know, success offensively down the stretch here. Hey, Kevin, just just in general, are there any updates um, on those three guys you missed on Saturday and, and O'Neal, Madison and Naylor? Yeah, uh, Madison's going to, you know, continue, you know, progressing. He's been getting kind of treatment around the clock to try to uh, see if he can work himself into being available for this week. Uh, Brian O'Neill's in the same, uh, the same category, and, and we'll just kind of be day to day as we progress towards the game as far as their availability early in the week. Don't, don't know that for sure yet uh, for practice availability. And, and then Jalen Naylor continues to work himself through the protocol, and, and we'll allow the doctors to kind of, uh, clear him as he goes and when he's available, hopefully we can get him back out there. Uh, but I don't have an update as far as what that looks like for Sunday. It would just be speculating at this point uh, on those three guys. But I know all three of them you know, are doing everything they can to try to get out there. Kevin, Don, and Alec. <clears throat> yeah, Kevin, um, I was just wondering if you could just kind of take us through uh, your sort of plan for Ty Chandler's development this year. Um, as you said, he was starting to get more carries, you know, that kind of corresponded with injuries. Um, did you see him getting on the field kind of regardless or did it need to be opened up? His opportunity need to be opened up by injuries to others? No, I, I saw Ty uh, getting on the field regardless. It's always been, you know, kind of his plan since we selected him last year. Um, we've had uh, our eyes on continued growth and development and um, I know, uh, you know, nobody gets more excited uh, than when I see Ty go out there and have the success he did. But it has been, you know, a part of his growth and process. And, uh, you know, I, as, as great as Ty was running the football the other day, there were some great moments uh, in protection uh, on some play passes where, uh, you know, he solidified some things for us, had great awareness of the looks we were playing against, whether it was going fast in tempo situations, uh, tried to get him going on a screen, got him going out of the backfield for a big third and short conversion. It's just all of the different aspects that I think Ty brings to the table, Kevin, and, and his comfort level, uh, while also you know, having a major role you know, for our, in, in, the, in the special teams phase as our personal protector. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm you know, faking it twice this year in big situations uh, if Ty Chandler's not the guy with the ball in his hands uh, in those moments. So Ty's had a big impact, and, and like I said, I think Ty is exactly you know where he want where we want him to be in his progression, and I think uh, the role you know he's ascending to is is uh, you know something that uh, you know we had our minds on when we brought him here, and and we'll continue to do everything to you know get him valuable touches and make him a big part of our offense. Don. You're on mute. Alec, go ahead and jump in. We'll circle back to Don in a second. Yeah, hey, Kevin. Um, I just wondered how difficult maybe has it been for you to evaluate some of these performances when it is one or two plays that seemingly have such outsized importance in, in so many of these games? Yeah, Alec, I think you have to, you know, you have to take a look at it through the lens of each individual play, you know, what, uh, you know, whatever phase of your team that it is, um, how that relates to the sequence of plays, you know, if, uh, if we find ourselves in a third and long, how did we get there? You know, maybe the execution on that third and long isn't what we want, but was it a, a critical breakdown on first and 10 or like the other day, second and one? Um, in the red zone, and we inevitably find ourselves in a third and seven or eight after, you know, uh, you know, the execution wasn't what we wanted, and, and maybe the potential of 
of having a positive play there that ultimately would have gave us a new set of downs inside the 10 and, and maybe it's a whole different story. But I think it's important that we look at it from a lens of you know, each individual player, what are we asking them to do within their roles and responsibilities, snap in and snap out um, offensively and defensively, and then how do we kind of continue to shape game plans to maximize the players we do have available, uh, the things that they do well, and then how are we practicing and preparing our guys to inevitably go out there and have the success uh, you know, on Sundays. So I think it's, a, you know, it's an ongoing process that we're you know, trying to make sure that we're, we're checking a lot of boxes and getting our guys ready to go. And then are we doing the things that our guys do well and giving them ops to, to thrive uh, when it matters? Is it me now, John? Yes. OK, thanks. Sorry, I wouldn't unmute. Sorry about that, Kevin. It's OK. Technology. Uh, this is kind of a two-part question. First of all, when you see um, Nick making those mistakes, when they're especially in the red zone with interceptions, I mean, being a, a quarterback, a former quarterback yourself, sometimes those are decision-making. Is there anything that you also saw watching those tapes that maybe he was doing wrong when it when it comes to maybe forcing those throws, or just were they just bad throws? And also, second, um, your evaluation of Justin Jefferson after that game. Yeah, as you guys have heard me say before, I think each individual, you know, turnovers in general, you know, have their own story. I thought the first interception, uh, he was being aggressive, uh, kind of expecting, uh, you know, versus man-to-man -man coverage for, for maybe, uh, you know, our, our receiver there, JJ, to flatten across there. And, uh, you know, a lot of times quarterbacks are throwing those with the anticipation of where uh, guys are going to be, especially how fast Nick made that that decision um, and uh, you know that's something that uh, ultimately we look at as you know we can't have those uh, turnovers especially in the red zone in field goal range on a third and longer situation uh, it's just managing uh, those situations um, and understanding you know the value of that play uh, and the opportunity there uh, you know to understand that if we maintain possession of the football at the very least on that down um, we're going to have an opportunity at points, and, and I think that's the critical thing when you look at what three or six more points would have looked like on Saturday. It could have been the difference between not even going to overtime or at all. Um, with the second one, I thought it was a classic case of a guy just trying to do too much. Um, you know, we, you know we, we tried to give him an opportunity to see if we convert, can convert once again on a third and longer situation after kind of being in a second and, and one type of situation off of a completion. And then, uh, you know, we go backwards into a third and long. And then uh, Nick just trying to do too much with the football. He's in the grasp of a defender. Uh, there's really not a lot of good things that can happen at that moment. Uh, even trying to get the ball thrown, of the, thrown away um, puts the ball at risk on your way to the ground there where um, it's, it's not your standard interception where it's a downfield op where a defender makes a play on the ball. That was more of a, almost a borderline fumble variety that gets labeled an interception at that moment, um, but still nonetheless a very poor decision. And those are the things that, uh, you know, you have to manage uh, the situation as the quarterback out there understanding we've got a three-point opportunity for Greg uh, no matter what uh, happens right now as long as we maintain possession of the football. And when you're able to drive down there like we we're able to do most of the day, sustain drives, uh, get down into uh, deep into Cincinnati's territory there. Um, you'd like to come away with points every single time you get those opportunities. You'd love touchdowns first and foremost, but if uh, you, know, you get yourselves behind the chains and, and it's a longer yardage situation and the play is just not there within the rhythm uh, that the pocket uh, allows there, we've got to maintain possession of the football and guarantee at least an opportunity at getting three points right there. And, um, you know, we coached Nick up on that. It was, you know, his first significant uh, real op of, of playing a whole football game. And like I said, there was a lot of positives uh, that came out of, of his performance, things that we can build on. And there's always going to be uh, those coachable moments that uh, we've got to find a way to limit those turnovers because, you know, we know what that stat looks like when we do lose uh, the turnover battle. However you get there, uh, you know, we've, we've found a lot of success when we win uh, that battle or at least break even. Um, and decision making and understanding the risk reward of how you play your position, especially at the quarterback position, is everything that we're talking about right now. And then as far as Justin, um, I did think Justin, 
uh, you know, really responded to, you know, got very limited work in the Vegas game uh, and then came out and played, um, you know, just about the entire football game for us. And uh, he's still working through uh, getting back to, you know, game-like conditioning to where he can, you know, truly be, uh, you know, 100% every single snap. But I thought he made some huge plays, some great catches, some difficult catches. And, and uh, having him back on the field, uh, really dictated a lot of things that allowed Jordan and TJ to have the ops that they inevitably had in the football game. Thank you. We'll close with Craig and then Ben. Hey, Coach, you mentioned getting Hicks back uh, potentially to the practice window. What I know the defense has really put together a nice stretch in his absence, but as far as his ability to help close out games and protect leads and, and stop a big momentum swing or something like that, what do you think? Uh, potentially getting that back and how excited are you to be opening his window with with potentially three games? Yeah, I think it's huge. Just what Jordan brings from a communication standpoint in that huddle or when people are kind of in that two minute mode and um, he can be an extension of flow out there as far as getting the call, the checks, the alerts, um, the communication to all 11 guys. He's got such great rapport with Harry and Metellus and Bynum on the back end and then making sure the front's dialed in with Daniil and, and DJ and those interior guys to go have the best rush plan tied in with the coverage. If we're sending a pressure, if we're dropping into coverage, whatever that looks like, uh, you feel ultimately the most comfortable when you've got a veteran presence like Jordan who just has total ownership of what we're doing. Um, and, and I think IP's been great uh, you know, in his absence, not only making plays, but you know, coordinating a lot of that, those things through the green dot. Uh, with Flo in his ear. Uh, so I think the experience that Ivan gained throughout that time will only help him and his communication um, kind of in that role uh, when Jordan does come back and those two are side by side, making sure uh, from that linebacker position that we're dialed in. And I know our guys are excited. Jordan is a, I mean, he's the heart and soul as far as the leadership goes uh, on our defense right alongside Harry and Daniil and, and Josh Metellus and some of our other guys. So. Um, I think anytime you can get a player like that back, uh, we got to get him, you know, some some reps this week and see where he's at towards the end of the week. And, and if we can have him available, I think it'll be a real bonus uh, for us for this week. Kevin, it, it looked like uh, on the broadcast, Lisa Brian was kind of trying to get your attention before I think the fourth down and might have been signaling or telling you to take a time out there. Was that what you talked about on Saturday, trying to make sure that you got clarity on the spot on the third down or, or what was what was going on there that he was uh, telling you to take time out? Yeah, it was, you know, Flo, I could him and I were having dialogue in the headset at the time about, um, you know, in the whenever you're in overtime, all of those. Uh, replays are handled, uh, you know, by the officials and the replay assist, uh, assistant and, and possibly New York. Um, so in those moments, uh, we were making sure kind of together collectively uh, that they had indeed taken a look at every angle uh, because, you know, I, we were getting some communication from the guys up top that maybe uh, there was a view of it that uh, we might have converted uh, the, uh, the first down on that third down opportunity. Um, they uh, informed me that the, it had been confirmed, uh, you know, meaning they had already gone to replay assist and, and kind of collaborated with uh, New York at the time when they were measuring uh, with the chains. Uh, and so uh, we've, we felt like uh, there was no sense of, of taking the time out in that moment to give them more time uh, when they did, in fact, tell us. And, and, and Flo was absolutely, uh, you know, doing, you know, what, what I ask of him every game is him and I have constant dialogue about the situation of the game and maybe the re our dialogue with the referees. Um, and we were just uh, making sure that they had, uh, we wanted to hear that word confirmed, meaning that they had seen what they needed to see, taking a look at all the angles available to confirm that we indeed, uh, you know, did not, uh, did not get the first down because, uh, the, you know, the side judge on our side, you know, uh, did mark it beyond the line to gain. So, um, you know, I'm thinking we already had the first and 10 and started thinking about that next sequence of downs. And then uh, the side judge on the other side marked it uh, a little bit further back from that and making it fourth down. Uh, but, you know, Bill Vinovich and his crew did a great job communicating in the moment uh, that they were indeed looking at it uh, and that they had confirmed uh, the spot. And, and so when that happened, there was no need for a timeout in that moment.